Chemistry lecture number 25, emission spectra. Photons are made by the movement of electrons. Electrons move between orbits in an atom to make photons. There are several ways orbitals surrounding the nucleus of an atom, or there are several orbitals surrounding the nucleus of an atom. Uh, electrons occupy these orbitals. And the orbital closest to the nucleus is the ground state. Orbitals further away from the nucleus are higher or larger orbitals. Let me draw you a picture showing you what the words mean. Okay, so here we have the electrons orbiting the nucleus, and the electrons uh, occupy these little circles or orbitals. The circle that's closest to the nucleus is called the ground state, and the ones further out are the higher or the larger orbitals. When an electron drops from a higher orbital to a lower one, a photon is produced. Now the next picture shows an electron dropping from the n equals 2 energy level to the n equals 1 level to the ground state. So it's uh, dropping from a higher orbital to a lower orbital. And the energy of a photon being produced is calculated from E equals HF. So here we have an electron in the, I guess this is the n equals 2 energy level, and it's dropping to a lower energy level, the ground state, the n equals 1 energy level. When the electron drops from a higher energy level to a lower energy level, a photon is produced. And the energy of the photon is expressed as E equals HF. So if you knew the frequency of the photon, you could uh, calculate its energy. Electrons are attracted to the nucleus, and it takes energy to move the electron away from the nucleus. If an electron absorbs a photon, the electron will now have the energy to move from a lower to a higher orbital. The next diagram shows an electron in energy level 1 absorbing a photon, which then gives it the energy to move to energy level number 2. It then shows the electron <coughs> excuse me, dropping back down from level 2 to level 1 and emitting a photon. So atoms can absorb or emit photons. So here's our picture. Here's an electron, a photon comes in, the electron absorbs the photon, which gives it the energy to move away from the nucleus. So this negative electron will move away from the positive nucleus and go to a higher energy level. But almost immediately, um, the electron, since it is attracted to the uh, nucleus, will drop down from a higher orbital to a lower orbital. The negative electron is still attracted to the positive nucleus, so the electron drops to a lower energy level, and in doing so, it gives off a photon. Different atoms emit or absorb photons of different wavelengths. And we can identify atoms by the wavelength of photons absorbed or emitted. And if the wavelengths are between 200 and 700 nanometers, we see the photons as visible light. So the photons have to be within this range in order for us to see it. Uh, white light is composed of colors. Specific colors have specific wavelengths. So if the photons have wavelengths within this range, 630 to 760 nanometers, you're going to see the color red. <clears throat> but you'll see different shades of red depending on the wavelength. So uh, you might see a darker shade of red if you get higher than 630. All right. And there's also something called infrared. We can't see infrared, but infrared photons have wavelengths that are uh, longer than 760 nanometers. So if the wavelengths are greater than this, just beyond this range right here, 761, 762, and so on, uh, it's infrared light. And we can't see infrared light. You have to use those infrared filters. Uh, on the bottom here, we have violet. We see the color violet. But then beyond violet is something called ultraviolet. So if the wavelengths get smaller than 380, uh, that's UV light. And we can't see UV light, um, but we can produce it and do neat things with it, which is what we'll show later. So we can identify atoms by the colors absorbed or emitted. Now, the next diagram I'm going to show you shows a glass tube filled with hydrogen gas. And electricity is passing through the gas, and the gas is emitting light. The light then passes through these vertical slits and then goes into a prism. The prism separates the light into colors, red, blue, green, blue, violet, and violet. Let's see, do I want to show you the picture yet? Okay. So, let me show you the picture. That's the one I want. Ugh. Pictures, pictures, pictures. Oh, yeah, it's coming up. Hold on. <laughs> 
Now, anyway, so, <coughs> um, yeah. Electricity is passed through the hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas gives off light, and then the prism separates the light into different colors. So, only hydrogen atoms are going to emit uh, specific colors at specific locations. And this is what we call the emission spectrum of hydrogen. Okay, so here's our picture. Here's hydrogen gas. Electricity is going through it, so it's producing light. Light's passing through these slits, and then the light passes through the prism. The prism separates the colors out. All right, and so you're going to see this pattern of colors from hydrogen. And if we were to take a look at these colors and put them right here, <clears throat> this is the pattern of colors you'd see. Uh, you'd see this shade of red at this particular location, this shade of blue-green at this particular location, blue-violet at that location, and then violet at that location. So this pattern of colors is the emission spectrum of hydrogen. <coughs> now under some circumstances, substances can produce a continuous spectrum. And this is just a fancy way of saying uh, that the substance can produce all the colors of the rainbow and all the different shades of color. An incandescent light bulb produces a continuous spectrum, and so does the sun. Incandescent light bulb has a tungsten filament. It's different from a uh, fluorescent light. Now, if sunlight were to pass through an element uh, in the gaseous state, the element would absorb specific wavelengths of light. If the unabsorbed colors were projected on the screen, uh, there would be bands of color missing. Now, I'm going to show you a diagram showing how an absorption spectrum is produced. Uh, light with a continuous spectrum is passed through an element in the gaseous form, and then the gas absorbs some colors and passes the rest of the colors through a prism, and the prism separates the colors and projects them onto a screen. So first what I want to do is I just want to show you a picture of a continuous spectrum. Okay, so what you see here, let's see if we can do it to get the glare out. There we go. Okay, so what you see here that is a continuous spectrum. So you're seeing all the shades of red and all the shades of yellow and green and all the different types of uh, colors all mashed together. Okay, so this is a continuous spectrum. All the colors and all the shades of the colors right there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to show you uh, how an absorption spectrum is produced. <clears throat> so the way it's done is White light is, uh, or incandescent light, is passed through an element. In this case, it's sodium vapor. The sodium vapor produces certain, or it absorbs, actually, since it'll absorb some of the light in the white light. So the sodium vapor absorbs some of the colors. All the rest of the colors pass through the prism and are projected onto a screen. <clears throat> and then since the sodium absorbs some of the colors, some of the colors are missing. Sodium uh, has a yellow color. So when we look at the absorption spectrum, we see these dark lines. So these dark lines represent the particular wavelength of yellow that is absorbed by the sodium. And this pattern of dark lines right here, that's the absorption spectrum of sodium. All right. Now the screen shows something similar to a continuous spectrum, but the black lines are at specific locations. Uh, the black lines show that colors were missing, and the pattern of black lines is the absorption spectrum. Now the next set of pictures I'm going to show you is a comparison of the emission and absorption spectrum of hydrogen, and notice that the colors emitted by hydrogen match the colors that are missing in the absorption spectrum. So. Here is the emission spectrum of hydrogen right on top here. Let me lift this up a little bit so maybe you can see it a little bit better. <clears throat> All right, so kind of hard to see, but you can see these little colored lines right here, here, and here. So these are the colors emitted by hydrogen. That's the emission spectrum. This is the absorption spectrum of hydrogen. It's a continuous spectrum with certain bands of color missing. And notice that the bands of color that are missing match the colors that are emitted. Okay, so the absorption spectrum is just the mirror opposite of the emission spectrum. It shows the colors absorbed. The emission spectrum shows the colors emitted, and they're the same. <clears throat> now 
Now you can observe absorption and emission spectrums um, when a substance has phosphorescent properties. And phosphorescence occurs when a substance absorbs photons but doesn't release them all at once. Instead, the photons are gradually released very slowly. Uh, Glow-in-the-dark objects exhibit phosphorescence. And with these objects, you hold them under a light so they can absorb photons. And then you shut off the light and then go into a dark room and you can see the objects glow. And they glow because the photons are being released slowly. So I have a uh, glow-in-the-dark object. <clears throat> right now I have it sitting under a lamp absorbing photons. I'm going to put it underneath the uh, camera lens here. Then I'm going to shut the light off and you should see it glow in the dark. So right now it's absorbing uh, photons. I remove it. Okay, so here's our object. Shut the light off. Ta-da! Glow in the dark. If you watch it, see how it slowly fades? So it's releasing all of its photons. And it's reaching a point where I can barely see it. All right, so that's glow in the dark. It slowly releases the photons, and when it's out of photons, you can't see it anymore. Let's turn the light back on. Now, absorption and emission also occur during fluorescence. A fluorescence occurs when a substance absorbs photons with a short wavelength, then emits photons with a longer wavelength. Now, a black light bulb like this uh, emits ultraviolet light, which is invisible, we can't see it, and has a shorter wavelength than visible light. If an object is marked with uh, fluorescent ink, the ink can be made visible if it's exposed to UV light. Now, the ink absorbs the invisible shorter wavelength of UV light, and then emits the visible light, which has a longer wavelength. Objects that are marked with fluorescent inks include paper money, credit cards, and a driver's license. So I have some objects here that uh, fluoresce. It starts out, this demonstration starts out kind of crummy, but it gets better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut the light off, but then I'm going to turn the ultraviolet light underneath it. So currency has bands printed inside of it that are only visible under ultraviolet light. So I'm going to turn my UV light on and then I'm going to shut this off and I'm going to hold this under here. Okay. So can you see that up and down band there? That is a fluorescent strip inside a $5 bill. Can't see it that well. Let's try another one. This is a, uh, whoops, there's a $10 bill. And the $10 bill has, let's see if I can find the $10 bill. $10 bill one's hard to find too. All right, so I'm going to shut the light off and then we'll pass the bill over the black light and see if we can find the, phosphor the uh, fluorescent band in that one. I think I found it. Wait a minute. And there it is, okay. So that little orange band in there, um, that's a fluorescent strip in the $10 bill. So, I guess it's somewhere under here. Can't see it that well there. All right, <clears throat> $20 bill. So you can't see anything there. Shut the light off. Put this underneath, up, oh, and there it is. There's the band, the fluorescent band in the $20 bill. Okay. And then the $100 bill. Can't see anything there, but I'll turn the light off. And see, there it is. Fluorescent band. All right. Now, that's the money. Um, driver's licenses sometimes have fluorescent ink in there. So there's a picture of me here. You can't see it, but it's printed in fluorescent ink. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut the regular light off, and then I'll turn the shine a fluorescent light on it. So we got it like that. Okay, so regular light goes off. Fluorescent light goes on. Ta-da! Okay, so there it is. There's me. There's a picture of me. And I turn this on, it sort of washes it out. See? You can't see it under regular light, but I've got it under fluorescent light right now. And so there it is. Not bad, huh? Okay, so I'll shut that off, turn that back on. And the last thing I'm gonna show you is 
a blank sheet of paper. It's not really blank. I wrote on here in invisible fluorescent ink a secret message that you can only see when it's exposed to uh, ultraviolet light. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut this light off and turn on the UV light so regular light goes off. New light comes, UV light comes on. Ta-da! And there's the secret message. Brush your teeth, do your homework, and go to college. So that secret message was probably written by my uh, mom. Okay, so shut that off. So that's examples of fluorescence. Okay, so for a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been Chemistry Lecture number 25, Emission Spectra.